today. AMD announced their new 3D Vcash chip, along with their next GPU. NVIDIA's card gets cancelled, and the RTX 5090 Ti is the biggest upgrade yet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, just like I recently went over, AMD officially announced their new Ryzen 9 7945HX3D, the first ever mobile chip with 3D vCache. The new CPU was shared during AMD's presentation at China Joy in Shanghai, and it's pretty much exactly what I discussed in a recent video. But we now have performance, specs, and all that good stuff. Starting things off with specs, this is a 16-core, 32-thread CPU with 5.4 GHz boost and a whopping 144 megabytes megabytes of L3 cache. And when it comes to performance, AMD shared this graph, which claims that it's more than 15% faster than the regular 7945HX. But if you look, it gets up to a whopping 53% increase in Rift Breaker, so it can definitely get some really big boosts. Of course, we'll have to wait for third-party reviews, but it definitely looks like 3D vCache can have a big impact in mobile games as well as desktop. With all of that said, there is some bad news. The new chip is only releasing in a Zeus ROG SCAR 17X3D on August 22nd, so it's literally exclusive to that one notebook. Obviously, that's a bummer, but this definitely is one beast of a CPU. Next up for today, AMD officially launched their RX 7900 GRE GPU. But first, as gamers, we talk a lot about leveling up in games. But when you want to level up your brain, there's only one place I recommend with today's sponsor. Brilliant! They're the place I go when I want to learn pretty much anything in the STEM field because they were literally made for it. And what do you know? No one teaches it better. I've actually learned some pretty deep stuff about memory, neural networks, and more. But Brilliant doesn't just have a ton of courses. It's really about how they teach you. They use these really fun puzzles that get you engaged and doing the problems yourself. See, it's more than just visual learning. It's learning by doing. And Brilliant is amazing at this. But don't take my word for it. It because when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial, so there's really no reason not to at least give them a try. I love them, and I know you will too. And when you're ready for more, and you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story, I've talked about this new 7900 GPU for a little while now, and just like the league said, AMD announced the card at China Joy, and they discussed the price, specs, some reviews dropped, all that good stuff, so let's get started with the specs. And here's actually one area that the leaks got slightly wrong. Earlier reports claim that it has the same 84 compute units as the 7900 XT. Unfortunately, it instead only has 80, which is 5,120 cores. It does come with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory across a 256-bit bus and gets a game clock of 1880 megahertz and a boost of 2245 megahertz. Finally, it has a total board power of 260 watts. In terms of performance, some Chinese outlets were able to test the card and, as you can see, it's a bit faster than the 4070 but also a bit slower than the 7900 XT. When it comes to availability, the card is only going to be made by PowerColor, Sapphire, and XFX, as well as a reference model from AMD. For now, the card is launching in China first, but AMD did share the price for it. In the US, it'll be $649, though it appears it's set to only launch globally to system integrators. So in the US, you likely won't be able to buy the card itself. Ultimately, at that price, it's a little more than the 4070, so it's about where you'd expect it to be. Still, not much to write home about in terms of price to performance. Next up, I have some bad news for anyone hoping to see a more powerful RTX 4000 card. If you've been following the channel for a little while, to which if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Regardless, I've been covering the fact that NVIDIA has a GPU that's much bigger than their Founders Edition 4090, and it was rumored to be a 4090 Ti. Pictures of it have been going around for quite a while now, as well as a gold version that was assumed to be a Titan card. Basically, this card at least seemed to exist, and it made perfect sense. Don't forget that the regular 4090 uses a cut-down 8102 GPU with 128 SMs, but the full 8102 has 144 SMs, so there was at least some performance Performance NVIDIA could have gotten out of such a card. 
Well, according to a new tweet from Copite 7 Kimmy, NVIDIA has canceled their plans for a 4090 Ti. So for anyone waiting on a more powerful card, you'll have to wait until next gen. With that said, there may still be a Titan variant, but I wouldn't hold my breath. According to Copite 7 Kimmy, NVIDIA is only planning some low-grade 8103 and 8106 GPUs. Of course, he could just be referring to gaming cards, which a Titan would be more of a hybrid card, but I'd assume he would have mentioned it if it was coming as well. All in all, it looks like the 4090 Ti is completely dead. And lastly for today, I have a massive update on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5000. Now, before I get to it, I know some of you will mention that my last video was about the RX 8000 series and how awesome that looks, and now I'm talking about the RTX 5000 cards. But keep in mind that I didn't have this information then. It's a brand new story that really makes NVIDIA's next-gen look amazing. So I'm not trying to flip-flop or anything like that, I just have new information that changes things. But yeah, let's get right to it. Starting things off, we have a new report from copi 7 kimmy on Twitter. Remember that this leaker has been one of the most accurate leakers in the past, so it's definitely someone to listen to. And according to this tweet, from multiple sources, he is able to actually confirm, which is a term that he rarely uses, so it's about as good as it gets, but to confirm that the gaming flagship of the RTX 5000 series will have a 512-bit memory bus. To give you an idea of how big that is, the RTX 4090 has a measly 384-bit bus, which is the same as the 39 and 3090 Ti, so this is a very big change. Not only that, but Micron has a roadmap that's out and one Twitter user noticed something interesting. On the roadmap, there isn't any mention of GDDR7X, which likely means that Nvidia should be using GDDR7, and we already know the specs of that. It gets up to 32 gigabits per second, so taking that and the 512-bit bus, Nvidia's flagship 5090 or 5090 Ti has a potential bandwidth of 2 terabytes per second an absolute unreal amount of data. And of course, NVIDIA likely won't use the fastest memory at first, but it's still going to be huge bandwidth. This also suggests that NVIDIA will finally be upping the memory of their next-gen GPUs, which is obviously one of the main issues with their current 40 series, minus price of course. Finally, we have a very quick spec update from Red Gaming Tech, who claims that the RTX 50 gets up to a whopping 204 SMs. Compare that to the 4090's 128 SMs, and you can see just how insane NVIDIA's RTX 5000 cards will be. Let's just hope they don't cost more than a new car. So while that does it for today, what RTX 5000 GPU are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!